Hey, what's up, guys? It's LeVar Arrington here from Up On Game. Wanted to talk to you about a serious issue. Hate. You know, something personal that I have experienced and witnessed and watched is how the hate in our country is getting so out of control. It's at an all-time high, and people are facing way too much hate. A lot of people don't think it's a problem, but I do. I can recall growing up, being in high school, one of my high school teammates good dude too just happened to wear a shirt that was a derogatory shirt towards my racial group it it depicted Malcolm X um, moments after he was assassinated and it just made me feel really really sad it made me feel upset and so many other emotions and it's really because we're supposed to be a team but it's going to take all of us to stop that sort of hate. As I mentioned, we are a team in this country, so let's take a break from hate so our team can regroup and regain our momentum. We need to take a timeout against hate. Visit StandUpToAllHate.org to help and join me in calling for a timeout against hate by following at What's Up With Hate or posting the blue square emoji. Lowe's knows you want to get even more value for the holiday. That's why as a My Lowe's Rewards member, you get new member deals on holiday decor, tools, and more. And you earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards to help you save on holiday and more. Not a member? Join for free today at Lowe's.com slash My Lowe's Rewards because Lowe's knows deals. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details subject to change. Welcome to an all new episode of Her Playbook, a podcast highlighting inspiring stories of women in sports, business and athletics. My name is Madeline Burke, and I'm joined this week by Selena Samuela, Peloton instructor. Uh, She does high energy tread strength classes, challenging both the body and mind. And I'm so excited to have you here, Selena. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. And you absolutely nailed the pronunciation of my name. I love that. I love that. I know (laughs) you're from Italy. And so the actual pronunciation of your name is a little bit more Italian, correct? Yes. Right. So my I was born and raised in Italy and my mom's Italian. And when she named me, she named me thinking like we were going to be in Italy. So if we were in Italy, I would be I would be Selena Samuela. But like that's really not the easiest name to pronounce for an American, but you absolutely nailed it. You we, did a you know, great job. We're doing our best. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited to have you here for so many reasons. Um, you know, you do so many uh, inspiring classes on Peloton. And I feel like Peloton is one of those forums in which, you know, people taking your classes feel such a connection with the instructors. It feels like, oh, I know Selena. I know, you know, so and so and such and such because of that um, connection. But how did you first get involved in, in Peloton? Yeah. So it was a really long story. Um, so I moved to New York from Hawaii. I had gone to school there and I I really just like felt drawn to the arts and I had the big dreams of being an actor, writer, director and all those things. So um, I moved to the city. I went to Stella Adler Studio of Acting. I, you know, was trying to audition um, and um, it just like, you know, it was really hard. I wasn't getting gigs. Eventually, I found myself teaching fitness. I got my um, certification as a personal trainer, um, which is also a crazy way that I got there because um, I wasn't getting jobs and I wanted to get my foot in the door and I wanted to get I wanted to get my SAG card. Yeah. Um, And one of my friends was a stunt coordinator and he was like, you know, you're really fit and you're active in fitness. He's like, why don't you try doing some stunt work? And like, that's a way to get your foot in the door. And like, maybe from there you can build and start an acting career. And I was like, oh, amazing. Great idea. So he was like, you really have to perfect a fight technique. And I was like, all right, well, I was doing some boxing for fitness at the time. So I was like, all right, let me dig into boxing. Um, So I really dug into boxing and I'm just the kind of person that doesn't, okay, I'm going to curse a little bit. Is that okay? I don't half-ass anything. Like, so I really like devoted so much of, you know, my time and energy to this, this technique and I fell in love with it. And somebody was like, you're really pretty good at this. Like you should start fighting. And I competed as a boxer for a little bit. And that kind of led me into teaching fitness because I was working in like restaurants and stuff at the time. And it just wasn't like aligning with, it wasn't just aligning with who I was as a person, right? Because you're working late at night and then, you know, it's just really hard to have um, like a healthy schedule and a healthy yeah. lifestyle when you're working those kinds of jobs. So I was like, all right, let's 
you know, start working in fitness. This is something I love. This is something I'm good at while I'm trying to do all these other things. Um, and um, then I got recruited by someone who was uh, had a boxing fitness uh gym essentially yeah. um and they were teaching um they were teaching like uh they were doing uh, what, what do you call it like in class uh in class like uh cl- classes with multiple people in class what do you call it group, group fitness group, thank yeah. you wow okay. they were doing group fitness <laughs> group fitness i love that i forgot group fitness and i literally teach group fitness but that's okay you know it's the little things it's you the know? little things <laughs> So, yeah, so group fitness, they, they were teaching group fitness classes that had boxing in it. And I said, all right, cool. Like, this sounds like I'll, like I'm aligned with this. And then I uh, became a personal trainer as well. So then that's how I was kind of supporting myself. And then Rebecca Kennedy was the master instructor at Peloton at the time. Mm-hmm. She was one of my clients. She came to my classes and she was like, I love your classes. Come and audition for Peloton. And I swear to you. I knew the moment I walked in there, I knew I was going to get this job. I was like, all the auditions I've ever been on in my whole entire life, I went in there like with apprehension, like really just feeling kind of insecure about like, am I going to get this gig? I don't know. Like really not feeling it. This one, I walked in the door and I was like, this is mine. Yeah. I know this is mine. Like everything I've done in my life has led me to this like moment and it just made so much sense. It's like all the things that I'd been doing my whole life, studying acting and, you know, get being involved in fitness and like loving the lifestyle, like healthy lifestyle of like working out and exercising, like boom, came together and it's like amalgamation, like this perfect job opportunity for me. And it happened. That is so incredible. <laughs> and I, I love how, you know, so many of us experience this. There's the path we think we're going to go down, the path we pursue And then the path that opens up in front of us and that one ends up almost being more appropriate and more on the nose for who we are. And like you said, there's everything that kind of came together. There's a performative aspect of Peloton. There is like that, the acting, there's the fitness. And, you know, you've grown up. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. You were born in Italy. Mm -hmm. Your family, athletics is very important in your family. You you had a lot of uh, soccer players in your family as well. And, you know, you moved to the U.S. when you were, what, 11. But but talk about just kind of growing up in, in Italy and around that environment and how that planted the seed of the importance yeah. of physical fitness for you. I mean, so, yeah, my Uncle Paolo specifically, like, really did well in soccer and rose up all the way to Serie B, which, you know, for Italian soccer is right. quite wonderful. Serie A is like the top level. It would be like, I guess, the equivalent of the NFL or right, whatever. Like yeah. if you were to have, yeah. like NFL and yeah. is like a like the CFL almost. Right. right. It's yeah. like just the level right underneath, or I guess it would be like playing like college football at yeah. one of the like top schools. Like it would right. be like a, the equivalent to that. But we just don't have like college sports the way the U.S. does. Sure. Um. So anyway, it was just is very yeah. It was a huge part of um my life growing up, going to my uncle's games, and just how important sports were to my family and also just but the physical act of lifestyle of my family my family they're a family of farmers so like you know my grandfather now in his 80s still like is out there trying to move and like yeah. <laughs> like we have to be like no dude like you cannot drive that tractor anymore right? like you, yes you know so it's like it's um yeah I mean yeah being active being physical is just it's always been part of who I am it's part of who we are. Right. And it's something that has translated to so many different walks of life. You mentioned Mm. you went to college in Hawaii, Mm -hmm. picked up surfing out there. That is one of those things, too. I grew up in L.A. I love to surf. Are you longboard or shortboard? Both. Any really? board. Wow. Any board. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Because I'm a longboard, yeah. but the shortboard, that's just a whole nother yeah. beast. I'm much better. I'm I'm a better shortboarder just because I spent so much more time shortboarding. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I just, like any board shape yeah. is like I love riding any wave, any board. Yeah. Yeah. And that but that takes a lot of is a different type of endurance, you know, for totally. people who aren't swimmers. It's a lot of upper body mm-hmm. strength and all that kind of stuff. How did you fall in love with surfing? Oh, my God. So. Actually, that was kind of the catalyst to get me out to Hawaii because I didn't really 100 percent know what I wanted to do. Right. But I got the surfing bug like on a few trips, like during the summer to New Jersey. And like I did a summer in Martha's Vineyard. And I was like, dude, the surfing thing is so much fun. I want to do this all the time. And so when I was like, well, since I don't have a clear direction academically with what I want to do, like I'm just going to go to the place that like would offer me like what I would want to do outside of school, which is strong was vibes. Yes. So I, yeah. So that's how I ended up out there. And, um, yeah, I fell in love with it. It was just, it's, it was such a challenge, um, to 
progress because it requires so many hours. Right. Right. You can't just like go out there and like on day one be like, all right, I'm going to do like a sick cutback. Like it takes years to like get to that point. And right. like um, it also just like there's something about being out in nature and like having working with nature to mm -hmm. achieve something incredible like riding a wave right it's really special yeah and I mean and also challenging yourself in different ways and I, I feel like in reading about you and in, in looking into who you are before we met today and before we did this podcast one of the things I love is like the different ways in which you challenge yourself mm. um, you know with surfing with golf every time you know I feel like throughout the years there were different benchmarks you could say okay I'm trying to get my golf score here I'm trying to get it there yeah. and you know you've really pursued that and shaving points off that yeah um Golf is another one, too, that you Huge. picked up a little bit later in life, right? Yeah, totally. Something that I think, like, the the similar, there's so many similar, similarities in, in surfing and golf. Um, that maybe from, like, the nerdy, like, <laughs> uh, like fitness uh, expert version of me would go, like, oh, yeah, like, rotational sports and, mm -hmm. like, balance and all that stuff. Yeah, the um, NASM version of <laughs> Exactly. Like, it's like, these muscles, those exactly. muscles, yeah. But also kind of the more zen version, um, you know, where you do have to center it is also an individual sport it's not about anybody else like it all comes down to you right like right. whatever somebody else is doing on their wave or how who, whatever game the other person's playing has nothing to do with your game like yeah. you have to like you're responsible for your game right um and that's kind of cool um but also you know in surfing like you can't hesitate like once you choose to go on a wave like if you hesitate, that's when bad things happen. Right. And it's kind of the same with golf. It's like you can't mid swing be like, oh, I'm going to hesitate or do like that's going to end up a disastrous like a, it'll be a disastrous swing. Right. And that's translatable in so many walks in football. If you hesitate on a pass, you'll get picked totally. off. If you hesitate, you know, you'll get, yeah. you know, whatever in life. If you hesitate on a decision, you know, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of about the like like doing it in the now. Right. As, as actually something I say a lot in my classes, like, you know, what you practice is what you get good at. And like, you got to practice the thing now, like not later, mm -hmm. like now. Yeah. Because so often people are like, OK, when I get to this stage in life, then I will be this. Mm -hmm. But in reality, like like you're saying, you got to be this to get you to that stage mm -hmm. in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And and practice the habits. I read something. It was like, you know, do the daily habits that the person you want to be would do or the best oh, version that. of yourself would do. And I'm like, that is really incredible and inspiring because so often that. people are like, you know, I'm going to sleep in today. I don't have to get up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'll do that later. I'll procrastinate. And exactly. It's like, would the best version of yourself do that? Would the highest version of yourself do that? The best part of football season? Checking out the post game stats, which wide out scored more than two touchdowns, which QBs threw for less than 350 yards. Think you can pick who will do what before kickoff? Then play pick six from DraftKings, an official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings pick six app. Select between two and six players and choose if they'll have more or less of a stat. It's that simple. And for all first-time pick six players, check this out. New customers play $5 on your first pick set, get $50 in pick six credits. Download the new DraftKings pick six app now and use code DK1. That's code DK1 for new customers to play $5 on your first pick set, get $50 in pick six credits. Only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org in Connecticut. Must be 18 plus. Age and eligibility restrictions vary by jurisdiction. Pick 6 not available everywhere, including New York and Ontario. Void where prohibited. One per new customer. Non-withdrawable. Pick 6 credits. Expire in six months. Limited time offer. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos. Um, it's so interesting too. So with these, you know, you're teaching Peloton, you're doing all this stuff, but you're also a, well, not new anymore, but a young mother, you know, mm -hmm. you have a two year old, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, and that is so incredible going through that journey as a woman, um, as an athlete, you know, the amount of changes your body goes through and the amount of joy and emotion. But, you know, I, I saw that you were going to train for your very first triathlon yes. right after, and then realized like, oh, I'm going to have to push this yeah. back because of. I'm realizing now I'm reacclimating with my body. How yeah. was that experience for you? Yeah, that was like a big, that was a big lesson. Um, I really had to check myself there and I had to check my ego. And I, I think the, what I took away from that is that you can't assign yourself an experience mm -hmm. 
Um, if you do that, you're going to set yourself up for probably disappointment, um, especially with something like having a baby. It's so unpredictable. Pregnancy is really unpredictable. And, you know, it's really magical and wonderful, but it can also be kind of scary in that way. Sure. And you just don't know how your body is going to react to that experience. You also don't know if you'll have a C-section or a natural. There's so many things that can happen in the process. Um, and so, yeah, I like I really did. That was the mistake I made is that I like assigned myself a postpartum experience. I'm like, oh, this is how it's going to be. And then yeah. as soon as I have, you know, and then I'm going to start training on this day and then da, da, da. and it was just like really unrealistic to the experience I had. And sure. like, I'll just I'm going to just say it like I gained 70 pounds in my in my pregnancy, which is, you know, it's not nothing like it's yeah. it's above what was recommended. And granted, I had a very healthy baby and everything was OK, but it made it a lot more challenging to get back to the physical activities that I had planned for myself. Right. And that was how my body reacted to pregnancy. And that is what like and thank God, like, you know, I had this beautiful, healthy baby. And so I'm not complaining, but yeah. it was certainly a challenge that I didn't expect to right. to to deal with. And so training for a triathlon didn't make sense for in the time frame that I thought didn't make sense. But what did end up working out was, um, you know, by the time the new, I saw the New York City Marathon was coming up in November. So by the time I was like maybe six and a half months postpartum, mm -hmm. which was the time that I would have had this triathlon. Right. Insane. Right. Because you have to train. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah, I thought I was going to start training for this triathlon at like two months postpartum. Like, not, no, no, no. But that was more more realistic. And sure. so I didn't that made so much more sense for me. And I and I was really happy that I was able to kind of let go of this idea of the triathlon, give myself some grace, because what it did is it allowed space for this other really great achievement that I accomplished that I'm super proud of. Yeah. Um, was running a marathon 10 months postpartum. And honestly, like when I think back on it, I'm like, wow, that was like that was so amazing. But at the time, like in the very beginning, I was so hard on myself about not, you know, being not being able to to train for this triathlon, I remember feeling so upset with myself that my body wasn't like cooperate, essentially right. cooperating with me. But what I learned is that it, 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 my body was cooperating with me, it actually gave me an enormous gift of my son. Yeah. And it was just doing its thing in the time that it needed to do. Right. And so, yeah, not assigning yourself an experience, um, I think, is kind of the best way to go and to kind of just like work with it day by day and and just... You know? Yeah. And just lock in. I mean, that's yeah. the thing too. I mean, we see, you know, covering the Giants, you see so many football players go through these injuries and come back and say, okay, I'm going to be ready to play by this day, but you got to kind of yes. listen to your body and adjust. Yes. And especially for an athlete and a competitive person, much like yourself. I mean, the very first marathon you ran, you won. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I yes. just need to say that again for the people watching and listening. <laughs> this woman, the very first time she decided, I'm going to run a marathon, she won the thing. I did. <laughs> like, that is, like, I think most people are like, I just want to finish. I just yeah. want to get there without throwing up. <laughs> yeah. And you won it. That's an yeah. incredible accomplishment. And that is just kind of a testament to the athlete you are. Thank you. Um, yeah, that is, it was wild. I didn't expect to, like, I wasn't, like, gunning to f to win the race okay. and, and it was i came in first overall for females it wasn't still but <laughs> and like okay like let's level set it also was not the new york city marathon it was a marathon in nova scotia it was a small marathon there were only like 450 participants or something like but it's of not them like, you won it yes <laughs> you came in first I did. like i think I that did. even if you want to say <laughs> in the most downplayed way like the very first yeah. time you said, I'm going to run 26.2 yeah. miles, you did it yeah. the fastest out of anybody out there. Yeah, it was cool. It was a really cool experience. Yeah. I remember at one point, like looking around and being like, dude, am I alone out here? Yeah. Am I going to? I'm coming did in I, first. Did I take a wrong turn? I or was like, Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, it was amazing. But that was actually that, you know, that contributed to why I had to like kind of let go of some of the ego when right. I ran um, the New York City Marathon after having my baby, because I knew even though I was, yes, ready to train for something like that, I wasn't ready to train for it at the paces that would have been competitive with like my last marathon. Right. 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 Um, I was and ready to set that standard for yourself in a way. Yeah, exactly. So I had to, you know, I had to shift. I had to adjust. I had to say, OK, well, what is what is possible for me right now? And then like and then push a little bit past that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. then it was just kind of like, OK, let's do the thing that's just that's going to keep my body running. Yeah. Going to keep me healthy so I can continue to teach classes. Um, but there's also going to get me across that finish line. And so, I, you know, I trained at a pace that was like way slower than 
anything I'd ever trained at before. Right. But it, it was it made sense for me. And I had nice, solid, even splits. And I crossed the finish line with a smile and could go and hang out with my son and play with him after the race. And that was that was the goal. And yeah, it, it was great. Is there, um, you know, something that you've learned about yourself in you know the last five, 10 years, perhaps yeah. that you think, wow, this is something that has changed my view. And this is something that I find so important to share with yeah. the audience that I've built. Mm, that's an interesting question. I think off the top of my head, and I, I guess this is more personal because I think this can vary person to person. But for me personally, I've found that allowing myself to be vulnerable and to share my stories, my various stories uh, through life experiences um, has been to great personal benefit but I, I also feel like it's 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 allowed me to grow in community um, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about because that sounds really vague um, but I recently uh, went through pregnancy loss I'm so sorry. and um, I felt you know at the time w when it happened I felt so alone um, and 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 isolated yeah um, and that got me thinking like you know, I did some research on it, obviously, and found that so many women actually go through it and it's such a common thing. Um, so I chose to share about that experience, even though it was a really scary thing to do. Right. But I had planned and as like one would, you know, I'd planned to announce my pregnancy and I had shared that with my employer. And like we had a date set for when I was going to announce my pregnancy, like in my second trimester. Um, and, you know, I ended up using that date to actually announce my loss. And I my loss happened pretty close. It was I was at early second trimester. Mm -hmm. pregnancy loss. Um, and so I used that date and I felt really empowered by this because I felt that so many women go through an experience like this, feeling isolated, feeling like they don't have community. And think about it, like your entire first trimester, you're hiding that you're pregnant right? and you're hiding that you're pregnant because like probably to avoid any sort of like public, like, okay, display of like grief or whatever, you know, when, yeah. if in case you do lose a baby. And, and usually they say, once you get out of the first trimester, it's like you're in the clear. You're in the clear. Right. But I thought about it and I was like, but what an isolating thing it is for all of us. Like, so we're, you know, we're hiding the, the first trimester can be the hardest trimester for a lot of us, right? Because you're sick all the time. <laughs> you're, you're essentially kind of like lying about why you're not having a drink or you're fake drinking. Yeah. And you're like, there's so, there are all these like aspects to it that just like don't feel awesome, right? You're like, yeah. oh yeah, I must have eaten something bad and that's why I'm throwing up um, mm -hmm. in the middle of a meeting. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just like, so already the, already just like having to like kind of this, you know, this this essentially hiding of like the fact that you're going through this this first trimester and, and you're going through it and it sucks and you can't like lean on people right. while you're like, you know, lean on your community is already difficult enough. And then when you go through a loss, you're further isolated because you're like, oh, I just went through this horrible first trimester. And now I'm going through this terrible thing and I can't share about that either because then that's, you know, that's taboo and it's like weird and people don't want to do. So I was just yeah. like, you know what? I think we should really, if this is such a, a, a normal thing. I, yeah. no, I hate to say normal because it's it's or a common. horrible common is yeah. the word, right? If this is such a common thing, and so many of us are going through this, I think that we should be we should feel able to we should feel uh, that we could be in community on this topic, and yeah. that uh, we shouldn't feel um, afraid to share these things. Yeah, um, and we should feel empowered to share them. So I shared about it, and it, the response that I got was overwhelming thousands of people reached out sharing their own stories and it wasn't like you know it wasn't it wasn't like a something that you would expect where you're like oh this is so sad and I'm gonna feel sad all the stories were stories of hope right I had you know I went through a loss and then I had my baby six months later or I had my rainbow baby six months later or I went through a loss and then I adopted my son like a year later and like all these wonderful stories of like there's light on the other side of this right um which was so helpful for me and I think it was healing for just the folks in my community as well, where they were able to share about their stories. And some of these people are like, this is the first time I've ever shared about this, but mm -hmm. here it is. And um, so I think like, yeah, letting down your guard a little bit can really offer s something wonderful. It can it can offer a lot of opportunity um, in a way that I hadn't expected. Right. And so I guess that's maybe one of the, I think that's probably one of the, the more inspiring or lessons that I've 
that I've learned in the past like five, five to 10 years. From the Delta Sky Club. Welcome back, Ms. Klein. To the Jet Bridge. Delta Airlines relies on 5G solutions from T-Mobile for business to power operations and serve customers faster. Together, we're putting 5G into the hands of ground staff so they can better assist on-the-go travelers with real-time information throughout the airport. This is elevating customer experience. This is Delta Airlines with T-Mobile for Business. Take your business further at T-Mobile.com slash now. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and like you said, you know, it's one of those things that when you're going through it, it feels so isolating. It feels so, you know, singular. Mm-hmm. And then you recognize when you put it out into the ether just how many other people have similar experiences and that sense of community. I love that word community that you, you come back to because, it, you know, it does – it having other people in a support system and building that in in an authentic way, it takes bravery too, to be able to say, Hey, here's this that I'm going through. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be open. And to do that in a platform like you have, um, with, you know, some people who they feel like they know you quite well because they get to experience you and all that. And, and, you know, to you, some of them are, you know, regular names that you see on the board or whatever, but now you're developing this sense of, a real community and building that. And that's one of the things that I feel like, you know, the Peloton community has built as well, but also just girlhood and womanhood in general. Absolutely. Is important for I love that girlhood and womanhood. I think absolutely. Cause the last thing, when you go through something like that, right. The last thing I wanted was, was for anybody else out there to feel like it made them any less of a woman or right. any less of a, a, a caring mother or, you know, whatever it is that you might think when you're going through something like that alone. Yeah. You almost like you, you want to, lend a hand or lend strength or lend support out to someone else who might be going through something similar because why the hell not like right. when we lift each other up we're we're lifting you know it's like the boat rises with the tide yeah yeah and it's like you never know just how common something is and it makes you almost feel like a weight is lifted off of yourself to have that absolutely as well and you know going through all these um you know growth and changes as a woman mm. I, there was something that you had said in uh that i read that i thought was so hilarious and that i <laughs> feel all the time is that I think you tweeted this out the amount of people that call me ma'am now <laughs> because you have you're you're out with your son yes. you're like what is it the ring the baby yes. why can't I have a baby in a wedding ring and still be miss I know I feel this so deeply yes. because I, and I know most people are just trying to be polite totally but I'm like I am far too young to be ma'am <laughs> And it's like, as a woman too, you're like, no, no, like uh, that, that just cracked me up. That was the most relatable thing. I just had to bring that up. Oh my God. I feel that so hard. I'm like, you know what? I'm still like reading like sci-fi and fantasy. Okay. I am not a man. I listen to Chapel Road. I know. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's so good. But it's also too, one of those things like as you are, you know, uh, going through new chapters of your life and marriage and motherhood and all that kind of stuff. And as an athlete too, and, and kind of holding on to different parts of your own personality um you know what has that experience been like in, in growing through those things ah so like basically like being like pub like a pub like almost yeah like yeah. a public figure as yeah. well too and saying okay you know you guys first met me here and now yeah. i've gone through these new chapters and new versions of myself and you know kind of evolving yeah. in a public in a front-facing way oh yeah oh my gosh that's like a that's a tough question that was a good, like, <laughs> yeah because i feel like I don't know. I feel like, you know, naturally you just you evolve as a human being and then sure. and then people just kind of come along for the ride. But you're absolutely right. Like, you know, when I first started at Peloton, I was single. I wasn't married. I wasn't thinking about having a baby. Yeah. I certainly wasn't a ma'am. I think everybody was calling me Miss at that point. Deep you, in the Miss era. I was yeah. very deep in the Miss era. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, it is definitely like... <sighs> As you evolve and you take on different like new challenges too, right? Like I got into golf while I was a Peloton instructor and now I'm so deep into that sport. Like it was 2020 that I really started playing when we had the pandemic and I I was with my now husband. We were dating at the time and I was like, oh, this is like really a huge part of your life. And like, I don't have anything else to do. And we were staying at his uh, his folks uh, house when we were like. Yeah. Lockdown. It's a great way to spend a day outside. Yeah. And so golf was great during the pandemic. It's like, what you mean I get to be in the grass and nature outside and nobody else is around? Yes. Amazing. (laughs) It was amazing for that. And so and then also like you get to social distance, but Mm -hmm. you still get to be like social and you're outside. And it's like so it was like, you know, it kind of took me by storm. Like I became 
viciously obsessed with the sport. I was, you know, like I said, I don't half-ass anything. I put my whole ass into yeah. it. And so then I, not only did I become obsessed with the sport to like better myself, then I was like, oh, everything that I do, mm-hmm. like, you know, as a fitness, like I started thinking about it from that perspective, like from the perspective of the trainer that I am and and started thinking about like, you know, kinematic sequence and all of those things. And I ended up getting like certified in, through uh, the Titleist Performance Institute, and um, I actually created uh, the very first strength for golfer, strength and mobility for golfers it, yeah. program at Peloton. So you're right; it really these evolutions as you change as a person really do affect what you do in your mm-hmm. life and in your career. But it's for me, it's it's felt like it's been in such a uh, like organic way, and and I've been able to. With a platform like Peloton, they're so wonderful. They've allowed me to kind of grow right. and do, you know, and uh, and really access some of these passions that I have and, and you know, and expertise and kind of marry my passions and my expertise to create, like, really fun new content. Right. And like you said, you don't half-ass it. You whole-ass whole it. Not only it. are you going to be playing golf, but you're going to be teaching other people how to optimize their golf with this. That is yeah. such an interesting way to, to approach it. It's just like, okay, let's start this Peloton class because people don't think about yeah. it. They think, oh, let me go out to the driving range. Sure. Let me go out to the putting green. But sure. like you said, a rotational sport and building the yes. muscles needed for it. Um, yeah. And, and also like teaching your body how to move in a way that's going to help you have, you know, good form essentially, right. or, or come up with good swing mechanics. Like mm-hmm. something I talk about in my golf program is disassociation. Like, can you rotate your upper body with keep while keeping your lower body stable? Can you rotate your lower body while keeping your upper body stable? These are all key aspects to being able to like have a mechanically sound swing because, right kinematic sequence would have you rotating your lower body first then your trunk then your arms and then finally the club head so it's like those little things that you wouldn't necessarily think of and you're like okay these moves make sense because it's kind of training your body like that neuromuscular you know connection right um to to like understand how to make to how to make this move or yeah essentially optimize the move yeah and how do you do it in a way that okay this is that you know I'm curious, too, how do you translate that to the Peloton app and and different like, is it okay? let's do this exercise? And do you tell people Mm -hmm. this is how it helps your swing or are you how do you how do you translate? Yeah, kind of. So like in the program, I talk about kinematic sequence and I talk about like essentially like what the ideal way it is for your body to move to create like the best, uh, the more optimal like swing. Right. Um, And everyone has different everybody will have a different swing there's no swing that's alike right and so depending on what your body can do is going to depend on what your swing is Mm -hmm. going to be um and so you want to like work with what you got essentially but at the same time you want to also try to heighten whatever it is so like here's an example say you find that you have you don't have a lot of a uh, gr- great rotation with your upper body mm-hmm. then you would probably want to focus on like mobility work that's going to help you get that rotation it's so interesting too because the new york city marathon was recently uh just you know relatively within the last few days uh weeks where are we in time i don't know it was it was recent. it was like two weeks ago yeah it was or like, like no last week it was last week. yeah was like, t- there's a lot of things that have happened and it yes. feels like time is <laughs> Expanding. It was the but, 3rd of November. I know that. So yes. depending on what day it is today. <laughs> so we just had the New York City Marathon yeah. early November. Yeah. Uh, and I, much like many New Yorkers, decided oh, I want to run a marathon. Yeah. And I have seen this and I've gone through this motion so many times as a just lay person who you know, tried to get out of running the mile every week in PE (laughs) and suddenly after college was like, you know, maybe I could be an athlete, you know, and every time I thought I want to run a marathon, I was like, I'll train for a half marathon. I'll do that. And then I'll do a whole one. I've run a handful of half marathons. Mm -hmm. And every time I have finished a half marathon, I think I cannot imagine doing that twice. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like, though, there's some level of just a mental hurdle there, too. Yeah. And, you know, when you've got, um, you know, people in your classes or people you're coaching or people you're working with that are like, this is the goal I have, but I am hitting this mental block Mm -hmm. here. I don't know if my body is physically capable of it. How do you encourage people to get over those mental blocks, whether they be in running, in fitness, in life, what have you? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, we have so many members that it's rare that I have people, well, at least not during class time, sure. right? They'll make sure. com- come up afterwards. But yeah, I I guess like the mental wall thing is very real. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think like anything else, it's it's kind of like you make you make when you decide to 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 try something new, right? Like whether mm-hmm. it's if you said, okay, I'm gonna try this marathon, but it's scary. Like, first of all, you made the choice to 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 attempt this new thing. Good on you. Like you're amazing just for for being brave enough to say I'm gonna try something new. Mm-hmm. And then if it scares you, good. Right. It should. Yeah. Because if it didn't scare you, then that pro- probably you need to shoot for something higher then there's a lot of growth in it (laughs) yeah and i think you got to make peace with the fact that not everyone is going to win their first marathon (laughs) unlike some people at this table right here (laughs) i cannot get over how impressive that is i know you can minimize and say oh there's only 400 people in nova scotia whatever that is still wow that is such an accomplishment um and and just kind of facing these and tackling these hurdles in life and and all that kind of stuff it's it's such an impressive journey that you've had and um, I'm excited to watch it continue to unfold thank you so much yes and I'm really grateful for you coming on this show today Selena thank you so much for joining us um Selena Samuela Peloton instructor mother sister (laughs) wonderful inspiring human is our guest this week on the her playbook podcast presented by Kendra Scott the jewelry company that's shining bright and doing good shop jewelry styles designed for every day and every occasion at your local Kendra Scott store or at KendraScott.com I'm Peter Schrager host of good morning football on the NFL network and the season with Peter Schrager podcast Whether you're ordering wings for the game or you're whipping up a seven-layer dip or you're ordering a pizza, there's something about football that makes you want to eat. And this football season, Uber Eats has the best deals on game day food, no matter what you're craving. From two-for-one pizzas to buy one, get one wings to whatever it is you want, Uber Eats will be dropping new deals each week all season long. Uber Eats is the official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. Order now for game day. Terms and conditions apply and see the app for details. Lowe's knows you want to get even more value for the holiday. That's why as a My Lowe's Rewards member, you get new member deals on holiday decor, tools, and more. And you earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards to help you save on holiday and more. Not a member? Join for free today at Lowe's.com slash My Lowe's Rewards because Lowe's knows deals. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details subject to change.